Seches Ksubas Dav Hay is all about the first bia of a couple after their wedding. There will be three sub sugyas. The Gemara's first discussion is why can't it take place on a Metzai Shabbos? The Gemara will explain that. Then the Gemara will go into that of a Besula. We said the wedding is on a Wednesday. Does that mean that the bia has to be on a Wednesday or could that be after nightfall so that it's on Thursday? And then we'll get into the actual halacha of a bias mitzvah on Shabbos, whether that's mutter or usher. Our Mishnah clearly said it, that it's usher, but the Gemara is going to discuss it. Rashi explains why they haven't seen the Mishnah. So let's begin. The first sugya is based on a b'risi, which we've just read in the last staff, which says that one should not do the first bia after marriage, not on a uh, Shabbos, not on a Friday night, and not on a Matzai Shabbos. So the Gemara says, I understand Friday night you can't do because it's making a wound, it's drawing blood. But why not Musa Shabbos? What's the problem? So the Gemara first says the reason is because of the calculations. Because you're going to make chaz- b- 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 you know, if you're going to do the wedding on a Matzah Shabbos, you'll be thinking about and calculating the cost and the expenses of the wedding on Shabbos. And you know, you're not allowed to do that. That is Daber Davar. You're not allowed to make calculations on Shabbos. So the Gemara says that's not uh, correct, because this would be a calculation that has to do with a mitzvah, and calculations for mitzvahs are allowed on Shabbos. And the Gemara brings at length. The Gemara says that Rav Chizan of Hamnuna said you're allowed to make cheshbonis of mitzvah on Shabbos. Rav Elazar says you're allowed to decide how much money you plan to give to charity on Shabbos. Rav Yaakov says in Rav Yechlan, you're allowed to go to shul and to base measures in order to take care of public needs on Shabbos. Rabbi Yaakov Ha'idi says you're allowed to clear away stones for a public need on Shabbos, that is to save someone's life. Um, Rav Shmuel bar in the name of Yonason says you're allowed to go to the government offices in order to take care of public needs on Shabbos. The Bey Menashe says you're allowed to uh, agree on a uh, a, sh- a shidduch, a match, on Shabbos, you're even allowed to get engaged on Shabbos, you're allowed to do Arison on Shabbos, you're allowed to set up that a child will learn from a certain teacher, or that he'll become an uh, uh, apprentice to a professional on Shabbos, you're allowed to do all these things. So you see, all these calculations of mitzvah are allowed, so there shouldn't be any issue calculating the wedding on Shabbos. So the Gemara therefore gives a different answer. The Gemara says, Zegzeira, if you have to make a wedding through the Matzah Shabbos, you're going to end up doing Malacha on Shabbos. You're going to end up shachting chickens on Shabbos, which is us, or one of the 39 Malachas. But you may end up doing that in order to prepare for the big suit that you have right after Shabbos, and you'll be stressed out about making everything ready on time. So the Gemara asks, if that's true, so then if Yom Kippur falls on a Monday, so you have a mitzvah suit on Erev Yom Kippur, which is on a Sunday, you'll end up shachting on Shabbos as well. So you should make sure that Yom Kippur never falls on a Monday. So Gemara says, no, 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 there's a major difference between a wedding and, a Yom, and an Erev Yom Kippur suda. First of all, an Erev Yom Kippur suda is for yourself. People aren't stressed out about a suda for themselves. They're stressed out about a suda for others. Um, so there's not such a big stress for Erev Yom Kippur Suda. Second of all, you have um, you have the night. The Yom Kippur Suda is the is not on Matzah Shabbos. It's on Sunday, if Yom Kippur falls on a Monday. So therefore, you have Matzah Shabbos to prepare. Here, the wedding's on Matzah Shabbos. Um, you don't have any time to prepare at all. You can end up having to do it on Shabbos itself. Okay, says the Gemara, once you say that this is true, I have another explanation for why you shouldn't get married on a Friday night, because you may end up preparing for the Suda, which takes place right afterwards. You may end up shachting chickens then as well. Now the Gemara goes to its next Suda. We said that the wedding of a Besula should take place on a Wednesday. Should the Bia be on that Wednesday, that is before Shki, or should it be afterwards, should it be on Thursday, should it be after nightfall? What's the issue? So the issue is we want that right after the beer, he should be able to go to court if need be. He shouldn't have time to calm down and not care about it, and then he'll end up being staying married to her, even though it's us, sir. So we want, we don't want a cooling off period between the beer and the availability of the court. So if the beer is going to be on a Wednesday, then he'll have more time to cool off until he can go to court Thursday morning. So perhaps it shouldn't be until late that night, which is already Thursday, so you don't have time to cool off. So are we concerned for that brief period, that longer stretch, or not? So the Gemara brings a proof that we are not concerned. The Gemara brings a Brisa from Bar Kapara. 
The Barsa says that a psula gets married on a Wednesday, and there and uh, her bia shouldn't happen until Thursday, till after nightfall. And the reason is because on Thursday, the fifth day of creation, the Kaddish Baruch gave a special bracha to the fish. He said, "Pru revu umilu samayim." So we want the bracha of Puravu to apply to that Basua. And therefore we wanted to get married on a we wanted to have her first Bia on a Thursday. So that's our proof that we don't care about the cooling off period. The only issue is the bracha. Should the bracha not be a concern to you, then she can do her Bia on a Wednesday. You don't worry about cooling off. Now the Bryce continues, and it says that an Almana gets married on a Thursday, and she has her Bia on a Friday. And the reason that she wants it on Friday is because the bracha that's given to people is given on Friday. It's at Puru Milos to Aretz. So that was given on a Friday. So we want her to get that a bracha Friday, so her be awaits till Friday. So the Gemara is curious. Um, we accept the proof, but why doesn't the Almana have her be on a Thursday so she could have the bracha of the fish? So the Gemara says, what do you mean? We prefer to have the bracha of the that was given to humans, we want the Rebrach of Purvu U Milu Esa'aretz. B'sula can't have that, because we have to have a B'sula have her be, a, be before the court convenes on Thursday, so she can't wait till Friday. But um, the Amana can wait till Friday, so she she will do it on a, a Friday. The Mara gives a second reason, and that's an Amana doesn't have Sheva Brachas, and therefore, if Herbie is going to be on Thursday, then on Friday, her husband's going to go to work. So she'll have the wedding, and then that's it. He's gone the next morning. Like this, the bia takes place on a Friday, so it stretches out. Thursday is the wedding, so he's home. Friday is the bia, so he's home. And then Shabbos is Shabbos, so he's home, so she gets at least three days before they have to return to work. Says so, well, what's the difference between these two reasons? The difference is, what if a person doesn't have a job? If her husband doesn't work, so then you would have the first reason of bracha, you would not have the second reason of him going off to work the next morning. Another similar reason would be if uh, Yom Tov comes out on Erev Shabbos. So he doesn't have, even if he has a job, he's not going to go to work on Friday. All right, now we had mentioned Bar Kapara, so now the Gemara brings some more things from Bar Kapara. The Gemara brings an Agatha that Bar Kapara says. So Bar Kapara says that the work of Tzadikim, in a sense, is greater than the creation of the heaven and earth, greater than the creation of Shemayim Va'aretz. The creation of Shemayim Va'aretz, the Torah says in Yeshayahu, it says, Af Yadi Yasta Eretz V'yemini Tipcha Shemayim. So Hashem says he created the Eretz and Shemayim with Yadi, with my hand, singular hand. When it talks about Sadikim, it says, Now the Mikdash is referred to as the Maise Yadayim of Sadikim. It's the work of Sadikim. It's where we do our Avoida. But that says, Plural, your hands created it. So you see that it's even greater than the creation of heaven and the earth. So the Gemara says there was a Babylonian, and his name was Rabbi Chia, and he said, I have a cash on that, because we have a third puzzle that says, It says that the sea and the dry land is created by Shem's hands, formed by Shem's hands. Again, this, this is all mashal, because Baruch doesn't have hands for any of this, but uh, here it says plural as far as the creation of the earth. The one says no, but it's a Korean exiv. It's actually written yodo without a vav, which is singular, his hand. The one says, but it says yatsru. Yatsaru, it says v'yabesh is of yatsaru. That's plural. They created. The one says they refers to fingers. Not only one hand, but the fingers of the hand. Like it says in the fourth pasuk, kiyar shmaya ma'ase etzba osecha yerech lechachav ha'mashar konanta. And refers to the creation of the sky by Hashem's fingers. So that's the plurality over there. In other words, Akash, it says, Hashemayim, Masarpen, Kavod, Kel, Masi, Yodov, Magen, Harakia. It says that the sky speaks of the honor of Hashem and his handiwork, his hand's work is told by the sky. So it's Masi, Yodov, plural, his hands. So it says, no, no, no. That's not talking about the creation of the sky, when it talks, when it says the sky tells of his greatness, it doesn't mean of the creation of the sky. The sky is telling the greatness of the Mays and Tzadikim. Tzadikim give brachos and they do tefillah and that brings the rain. And that is a praise of the Mays and Tzadikim that is told by the sky. So again, that is the 
plurality of hands there. It's plural, but it's referring to the Misa Tzadikim. It's not referring to the Misa of HaKadosh Baruch in creating heaven and earth. Now, Bar Kapar says another Agarata. It says, it says, You should have a shovel amongst your tools when you go to war. He says, Don't read it, Azenecha, read it, Oznecha, read it, your ear. And that you have a shovel on your ear. What's the shovel for your ear? That's your finger. If you hear something you shouldn't hear, something inappropriate, stick your finger in your ear. Your finger is shaped like a shovel, it's like a spade, sort of. That way you shouldn't hear anything that you're not supposed to hear. The says, This is what Rabbi Eliza said. Why is a person's fingers like a shovel? And when it interrupts, and the person's fingers like a shovel, in what sense are a person's fingers like a shovel? You mean to say that there are five separate fingers and each one is shaped like a shovel? You can't ask what the reason for that is. We know why there are five separate fingers. That's in order that there should each one has its own function. The zeres, the smallest finger, is used for a certain size in measuring the choshen. The kamitza is um, the uh, kamitza is the ring finger, it's the one closer to the small one, that's used to take the scoop of kamitza from a carbon mincha, it's used to separate out the flour that gets burned on the mizbeach, you sweep that with your three middle fingers, so the kamitza is the one that actually does the work there ama, the middle finger, that's used to measure the length of an ama, which runs from the elbow to the tip of that finger, the etzba that's the index finger, that's used to spray the blood of karbonas on the mizbeach and the thumb is used to receive blood that Aaron and the Kohanim used as the Taharis Mitzorah, they put blood on the thumb. So it's, there's a reason for each of them, that can't be the issue. So the Lord says, no, what Rabbi Loza must mean is that why is the finger shaped like a spade, where it's kind of sloped, and that's so that he should be able to stick his finger in his ear if he hears something that he's not supposed to hear. Similarly, the Gemara says, the Brisa of the Bey Rabbi Yishmael says, why it is the ear hard, but it has a soft lobe hanging from it? That says you can fold it up and stick it in your ear if you hear something you're not supposed to hear. Says Gemara, another Brisa, a person should be careful that his ears don't hear it's varm them, they don't hear idle chatter, because the ears are easily burnt, and they're going to burn first when that actually comes to pass. All right, now we get to our last sugi on the daf, which is the Gemara asks, is it permitted to do the first bia, bia of Absula on Shabbos or not? Now Rashi points out that Amisha clearly says that it's Aser, and Abraisa clearly says that it's Aser. But the author of this question possibly was not aware of the Abraisa, or it's asking if it's the Halacha. So what follows is a series of questions, one built on the other. If you resolve one, now we have another question we could ask. So first of all, what should be the issue? So... In a bia, two things happen. First of all, a that is a bia of a absula. First of all, there is blood released from the hymenal bleeding. The Mars question is: Is that blood absorbed in the flesh, and therefore it's a chabura, it's a wound, and it's being pulled out of the flesh, which is a malacha, or is it just kind of like a, a balloon of blood there, which gets broken and it already leaks out, but it's not drawing liquid out of something that's absorbed; it's breaking the barrier in front of loose liquid. That's not an iser of Chabura on Shabbos. Now, another potential mulacha here is creating the opening. That should be a told of vinyan, that is fixing and creating a uh, functional aspect. So the Gemara's questioning runs as follows. The Gemara says, first of all, is the blood considered to be absorbed in the forgiveness of Chabura, or is it considered to be loose? It's held in its liquid form and therefore it's not an Esa Chabura. If you say that it's in liquid form, so there's no Esa Chabura, the question is, why is he doing the Bia? Is he trying to get the blood out? And therefore, it is not intending to do any Iser. The removal of the blood is not a Malacha, we just said. Or is he trying to create the opening to be functional, and therefore it would be a Malacha of Vinyan creating that opening, it would be Usser. If you say that he... Um, wants the blood and he doesn't care about the opening, so he's still creating the opening usually but it'll be a Dovashen Miskavin something he's not intending to do. Is the halacha that a Dovashen Miskavin is mutter like Rabbi Shimon holds? Or is the halacha that a Dovashen Miskavin is also like Rabbi Huda holds? Rashi right, explains it's not a psikoresha that the, it could possibly be that the be will happen without a uh, proper opening being created. Now, Says the Gemara, if you want to say that the Lachas are Kavihuda and it's Aser, 
Possibly, this is mutter anyway because of mekalkel. Because you're not creating, it's not improving the woman. It's making her not a psula anymore. Is it good to be not a psula or is it bad? Is she considered to have less value now because she's not a psula? Or did you improve her because now she has a functional opening? Now, says the Gemara, there's a way of um, extending a list of questions, even if we take the other end of the first chayla. First chayla was, is the blood considered to be a chabura because it's absorbed, or is it considered to be held in liquid form? So even if you tell me that it's chabura, so I could still say that um, maybe he didn't intend to get the blood, he just intended for his own hana, and therefore it's a davashen and miskavin. If you say it is a davashen and miskavin, he just intended for his hana, so is the halacha like Rabbi Huda and it's also anyway, because davashen and miskavin is also like Rabbi Shimon, and the davashen and miskavin is mutter. Even if you want to tell me that the halacha is like Rabbi Huda and it's not, there's no heter of and miskavin, but it's still makalko, he's still making a destructive thing. Uh, he's creating a chabura. So is that aser? Is there an iser of kilkul the chabura? Chabura is a malacha which is innately destructive. Is that aser? Is that the iser? Or is chabura only aser if it is in some way constructive? And if you want to say that it is considered to be makalko be chabura, do we hold like a vihuda that makalko be chabura is mutter? Or do we hold like a shimma that makalko be chabura is aser? So these are the questions that Gemara asks. Gemara will get into answers on